Hi everyone, my name is Renisha Bratton and I am a senior health educator at Riverside Community Health Foundation. Thank you so much for joining us today for our episode of Let's Talk About It, Community Trauma. And also joining me today is my coworker, Nellie. Hi everyone, my name is Nellie De Jesus and I'm also a senior health educator with Riverside Community Health Foundation. So we're a part of the community empowerment programs that support community advocacy and positive changes uh, to improve the health of the East Side. One of our programs is the Healthy Eating Active Living, also known as Hill Zone Initiative, that exists as a Hill Zone to basically create culture, unity, and health and hope and leadership for the community and stakeholders that we partner with in Riverside. Today, we'll be addressing the link between trauma, um, which is the relation by exploring the relationship between trauma and social determinants of health. So let's get started. So some learning objectives we have for you guys today are to understand and identify those social determinants and how they affect on, and their effect on health and understand and identify how heal zone impacts local communities and identify way and identify ways that you can take action. Yes. So let's get started with the social ecological model. Here I have a with the social ecological model, which is a public health framework that addresses the different spheres of influence that affect individual health and decision making. So here you have the individual sphere where things like biological factors, personal beliefs, and health, be health behaviors um, come in, like what we eat every day or if we exercise. Then the outer relationships like our family and friends. And then we have community, the schools, the workplace, and neighborhoods. And then the outer, outer sphere, which is society, which includes all the social norms, the laws and policies that are passed, and how that in turn affects our health. So what does that mean? Let's just break it down and like give you like a clear example. Let's just take food, right? So let's say individually you're, you may be a person that has, doesn't have access to healthy foods and you uh, may have a poor diet that could lead to like chronic illness and different things that can impact the relationships you have with family and friends because maybe you need more assistance and care and different things come into place. Um, and then that also impacts your community, the way that you're able to move around, the access you have to things. And then even looking at the society, whether you have the health insurance to get the treatments and the care that you need for chronic illness or just screenings. Uh, what we want you to take away from this is that it's all linked, but that sounds easy, right? So here I have this figure of Fred, basically everything that we just talked about, community, culture, health insurance, income, and a, and a visual and how all of this, it's not, it's not easy, right? It's, it's a little bit more complicated than just exactly. what we do on our individual lives where we, 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 it goes beyond more of what we eat and what we, and how we exercise every day. So now we're going to take a look at the social determinants. And I have this figure here that basically shows me a large that a large percentage of our health is affected by outside factors here. So we have a 40%, the top one, the, the purple one. We have education, stuff like social job status, family and social support, income, and community safety. Um, as you can see, and then we have 10% of physical environment. And you can see half of this can be traced back to where you live. So that's yes. kind of kind of crazy to think that you know whereas we thought before that maybe a, a large of a large of it affects a large of what we do like our, our eating habits and our physical activity habits it's mo a lot of it is things that we cannot control and we're going to explore a little bit more on these uh, on why there are social determinants of health so let's start out with economic stability or income so why is this a social determinant basically tells us how much money you make affects that type of what type of food you buy, whether it's healthy, whether it's unhealthy, the quality, where you go, where you're able to purchase food, and where you can afford to go out to eat an outings, even if you can go out and afford to go eat and do outings, or, you know, or if you can only afford junk food. And then it also affects what type of housing you're able to get, what neighborhood you live in. Now let's look at employment, or I'm sorry, let's look at the social and community context, which is oppression and discrimination. Let's look at this as a very hot topic, you know, that we're as a as a society we're facing. Yes. So why would this affect our health, right? So when we look at discrimination and hiring practices, when we look at discrimination and when people do get jobs and people of color or you know gender biases of of who gets paid wages and all that affects our health and medical biases as well as those that get those of 
people of color get treated in the medical field differently than those um, than their counterparts. So, and I'll, and I'll in turn that affects our health. So now let's look at employment. And why does employment affect our, why is that a social determinant? Well, it affects because what type of work do you do? Mm -hmm. You know, nowadays, are you an essential health worker? You know, all of this is gonna take factors and, and impact your health, um, how risky your job is. And things like, does your work have an employee wellness program? Things like that all in turn affects our health. Absolutely. Another area we're going to just consider is education, right? So your access to a good education or a poor education, it directly affects your health. If you're a person that K through 12 had access to a good education, the chances of you going to college and receiving a good job and having income to support yourself are increased. But if you had lower education, um, the access to get into like a good college and have a better job may be decreased. So it is a direct link to the health impacts that we may have uh, throughout our lives. Another area that we want to consider um, that was briefly mentioned is healthcare. So if you suffer from a chronic illness or you need screenings and you don't have access to healthcare, that is a direct impact on your health uh, versus uh, someone who does have access to good healthcare, they may have better health outcomes. So our accessibility to healthcare is directly linked to the quality of life we live. And the last area we wanted to discuss is neighborhood safety. As mentioned earlier by Nelly, our environment, 40% of the things that we can't control impacts our health directly. So if you live in an area that has you know, high pollution rates, um, higher crime rates, or just you know, um, negative things in general, those are direct links to our health and the impacts of our health. Our air, you know, whether you have asthma or whether you develop a chronic illness behind it, um, our neighborhood impacts our health versus if you were to live in a safer neighborhood that had better air quality um, and different things like that, then the impacts on your health would be more positive. So now we're going to take a, a look at real local examples. And here I have this picture of, lo of local youth and resident leaders that at our NAC day, which is a day where we go to Sacramento, and it's a day filled with advocacy where they look at local policies that are going on and they're, they're advocating for their health and what is important to them. Yes. So here we have this figure of health. Health is in the middle. And as we discussed that health goes beyond the, you know, our physical, what we eat and what we do. And we also have our mental aspect, our spiritual and our social and all these components um, contribute to our overall health. Absolutely. And now we want to talk a little about the programming that we do with the residents and the youth in our um, area in Riverside. So the Healthy Eating Active Living Programs, which is also a part of the Hill Zone Initiative, is comprised of three main areas. So we work with adults, which are the real members, the residents of Eastside Active and Leadership, and their goal is to unify and nurture the em an environment of trust of the Eastside community. We also have the youth division, which is known as the Healthy Living Project Youth Club, and their motto is a bright change brings a bright future. We also have our faith-based division, which is a congregation of uh, 10 collaborative churches in the east side that actively work together to improve the health of uh, the congregation. So with these um, residents and youth, we partner with them. We um, give them skills and tools, we um, build them up with leadership, we connect them with partners to make active changes in their community. So some examples we'll give you is through our community improvement projects. Yes, so here we have the real that Ray explained as a group of residents. And what these residents go, through, all these real members go through a, a training called the Resident Leadership Academy. And it consists of 10 weeks where they touch topics like the social determinants of health, land use, the healthy foods, you know, our food system, where our food comes from. And then throughout the whole training sessions, they are gathering information about what changes they would like to see in their community. And as a group, they come up together with a project. And here are some examples of what those projects look like. Here we have an alleyway. Um, residents saw that as you can see at the before picture, it is a dirt alleyway. It's close to a, a Longfellow Elementary School over by Kansas and Franklin. Um, 
Kids would walk to school every day in this dirt alleyway. Uh, residents noticed cars would go in and out. It was unsafe. Um, they collected data of how many kids would walk, how many cars would go in. And throughout lots of work, uh, partnering, working with the city, working with other partners, they were able to convert the alleyway into a one-way alleyway. As you can see, it's paved now. There's a, they included a, an artistic community mural that was designed by them and even included a walkway for the kids to walk. And in the walkway, there's also a mosaic, um, artistic mosaics that reflect, um, that reflect the, the community's values. And some of the other projects that residents have been involved in have been park rehabilitations like for, in Patterson Park. Residents saw that there was a need for just to promote a more safety environment for families and they were able to paint a community mural in, in the bathrooms and make it more lively. And also touch on the community murals. We have over 40 murals throughout the east side that reflect yeah. community values, that reflect, um, they are designed by the community they, alongside with community artists. And yeah, it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful experience. And here we're gonna get to see a video of Mrs. Jackie and her personal experience um, being involved in these projects. It takes a village, and I'm part of that village, okay? Right here. Sorry about that. This is my heritage right here. We call this our kentacloth. It depicts the struggles that my ancestors went through coming over here to America. And each color means something, you know, green, the ground in which we grew our food to eat in Africa. Yellow was the squash and the yams that we ate. And blue was the water that we crossed over coming to America. These pieces of fabric here had to go in the mural because it represents my family history and more so the family history of African Americans here in Riverside. When I think about my grandchildren, I think about their future. That's why I do the things that I do. I go every third Wednesday to Longfellow's Elementary School to make the kids feel comfortable and safe walking to school. Every child in Riverside deserves to be safe and not only walking Wednesday, but also by putting stop signs and stop lights in certain places where kids are getting hit. It takes a village, and I'm part of that village, okay? Hillzone has given hope to the community. My voice means something. I don't have to be scared to speak up because I, I, I people don't understand me or I'm a different culture or something like that. I do have a voice, but the real has taught me and us through the classes that we have a say so on how we want to live in our community on Riverside. This mural is a reflection of us in our community. It do us proud. I want my grandchildren future to be proud of who they are and what they can accomplish. They could point to that even when Granny's down here and said, my granny did that. That's a piece of us. This mural, it's like the sun shining on us, showing us beautiful things, beautiful rays and uh, warmth and love. This is what we're trying to do. This mural symbolizes unity. I love that video. Yeah, so that was a wonderful example by Mrs. Jackie. And then now I'm gonna talk a little bit about some of the store conversions that we've, that the Heal Zone has worked on. So we would partner with local corner stores. As you know, local corner stores are known as the, the place where you get your unhealthy snacks, those chips and sodas, right? After yeah. school, kids walk to school. So we, we decided to partner with these local stores and ask them, are you willing to provide fruits and vegetables if you, know, if you had the chance to? 
So all of them said, yeah, oh, all the stores that we worked with said yes. And we were able to provide them refrigeration and storage for their produce. And then in turn, we, we also got to work with community members and a community artist to paint a, a mural that reflects the community, the, the just the community, the community unity among, um, among the East side. And a, a lot of these store owners um, share with us that they have noticed a lot less tagging in their stores since having these murals up in their stores. So here we have, and then we have the Olympic market on Crete Street and the La Tapatia market on University. So um, also what we mentioned earlier is we have our Healthy Living Project Youth Club, also known as the HLP Youth Club. These youth uh, within the East Riverside have done some amazing things. So here is a prime example. Um, they also saw an alleyway that they deemed unsafe. They used it to travel to and from school and they wanted to take their community back. So they did it through advocacy. They went and knocked on residents doors located at this alleyway between Dwight and Ottawa. And this alleyway was transformed in three phases. The way that they did it was in art and using their voice. Um, so in doing that, they have transformed this alleyway. They've partnered with the city. Um, they've actually been able to adopt this alleyway through the Chamber of Commerce. They've received awards for this alleyway. I mean, these kids that you see here in the video, uh, we do alleyway cleanups. They are actively working to change their social determinant of health despite the environment they live in. So I wanted to show you a brief video from one of our HLP youth leaders, Jasmine Ochoa, so she can explain to you her experience as an HLP youth leader and being a part of the projects mentioned. I love colors a lot because they bring out emotion. Whatever you put on painting with more color, you show how you're feeling. Emotions and colors go hand in hand. It's the way I connect with everything. HLP stands for the Healthy Living Project Club. We're trying to make changes in our community that's creating something more. We're positive, happy, funny, creative thinkers. Before, the alleyway was not very bright, so we decided to brighten it up a bit. We decided to create a mural, all of us together. To work with the artist, Juan Navarro, it was really inspirational, I would say, because we learned how we could represent our community, how we could put our emotions down. What I really love about this design is the fact that we incorporated everyone's opinions. This mural unifies the community because it's a representation of all different parts of Riverside. We have the Riverside Bell in the middle. It's unifying all different sides with many colors, inspiration, creativity, all of that. It's like the people are coming together in the center. <laughs> Before the mural got installed in the alleyway, we had cleaning up to do just so it can be put down and make it a bit fresher. And then there was the telephone poles, so we had to paint those over. I feel more connected to my community because because I put something there that represents them as a whole. Different cultures, different ethnicities, different backgrounds, many different experiences. It's bright, it's unifying, it's the people. The HLP Club allowed me to get out of my shell. I was actually very shy when I first got into the club. I didn't really want to share my opinions. It feels amazing to share my creative voice because seeing it actually put down in the alleyway, it's kind of shocking. Oh my God, I feel like I'm gonna cry. <laughs> um, it's amazing really to be able to share what you feel, putting it down, letting others see it. It's just an amazing feeling. HLP, what it means to me is something created by friends.
So as you can see, the youth of um, Eastside Riverside, they're amazing and they do a lot to change their community. They're, they are true advocates. Um, that is the first of its, uh, in the first of Riverside. So they made history. They, they are truly leaving their mark. We also have a different um, division within our Healthy Living Project Youth Club that is also located at John W. North High School. So they have worked over the past couple of years to advocate for food uh, security. Here you see them. They partner with our USD NEOP program to learn nutrition education. They received donations for garden beds. They received all the education for starting their own garden on their high school campus. So you see them starting from the ground, um, building the garden beds, leveling the ground. They um, got seedlings from a, a local farmer that we partner with through our uh, Riverside Community Health Foundation to plant their seedlings. They nurtured them throughout the semester. They grew their crop and then they got to eat the fruits of their labor, right? So they had a salad bar party where high school youth on the high school campus during their lunch hour got to enjoy fresh fruits, I mean, fresh fruits and vegetables after growing their own crop. This not only brought a uh, fresh food to the high school campus, but it taught them skills that they can use at home and just to improve their uh, health overall. Speaking of community gardens, here we have the community garden over at Community Settlement Association or CSA, um, where basically residents are able to have a little plot they're able they, they have monthly um, garden club classes um, club meetings and also they go through classes like master gardener classes to to learn about gardening and how to have you know how to grow these these fruits and vegetables so it's just just a wonderful you know with an with the empty plot of land um, you can anyone can create a, a community garden in their in their neighborhood and then we also have the faith-based group, which every year they plan the annual Walk by Faith, which is a, consists of a walk, a 3.5K walk, roughly, uh, throughout the east side. Um, they connect through all the congregations, and it's just a great event where, you know, the community and the congregations get together and a way to, you know, unify together and just, you know, you know, this is our east side neighborhood, and, you know, they're out there and walking, right? So it's just um, a great group to work with. They also, throughout the year, they're working on establishing health ministries in their congregations. So now we wanna look at the area of how do you take action? This was an example of what we're doing through Riverside Community Health Foundation as a part of Hill Zone, but community reclamations are happening all over the United States. And so we wanted to just show you a couple of other examples of what's going on. So here we have, we'll start with Chicago. Um, in Chicago, you have street artists that also put up murals. And in turn, what does art do? It helps with telling the voice of the community and decreasing gentrification in those areas. And this is done in partnership with the city and um, the community's voice. So here we have a TikTok influencer um, named Jackie Alexis, who actually showed some of the art located in Chicago. What it really means to live like gold. Sweetheart, are we offending you? And in another area, Los Angeles, uh, we have individuals taking action. This was also a TikTok influencer by the name of uh, Bouncy667. She went and took it upon herself to make DIY homeless sanitation stations to combat COVID. So this is for people who are homeless, who uh, need hygiene out outdoors, or just anybody in the neighborhood who want to keep their hands clean. So I thought what she did was really inventive. And these are things you could do locally. And now we're going to go look over in New York and this unique way of how community and business owners can partner together and provide a community a community refrigerator. And here we have a TikTok influencer, Sire the dawn 56 and just a quick video of what that what a oh, that's how they do it in the bronx man free fridge oh, that's for the community man 
community refrigerator, man, outside so people can. So just so many different ways you can get involved. Yes, now we're gonna take a look over at in Oakland and more community art. Here we have a community art mural by TikTok influencer S. Javiel. Let's take a look. How can you take action? You can attend your local town hall meetings. You can look at nonprofits in your area. You can look up the uh, public health departments. You can even start um, getting training and advocacy on your own to make these similar changes in your community. Also, if you are local and you are in the Riverside or east, the east side of Riverside, you can come and join us at the Hill Zone. We have all of the programming that is available to the community for free. We train you, we support you, and we advocate for positive changes that impact your health daily um, through Riverside Community Health Foundation. Also, if you're looking for more ways to get involved, you can also go to rchf.org to see all of the um, classes and sessions and things that we have available for you throughout the week. Yes. Thank you so much for joining us while we shared Heels on Residence led community projects that provides insight and community change and the correlation between community trauma and the social health determinants. Please join us next Friday, well, Friday July 24th at 3 p.m. for our next episode of Let's Talk About Community Trauma. We want to hear from you. So let us know what you thought about the topic that we explored today by commenting below. If you have an idea or another topic if you like, that you would like us to explore, please share with us by commenting below. Lastly, don't forget to like and follow us on Facebook and Instagram for more classes, sessions, and great conversations. Again, thank you so much for joining us today. Have a great Have weekend. Have a great weekend, and thank you for listening. Bye.